Matrix Five is great. It's just a little too. Um, it's kind of like Robert Monroe meets David Icke, reptilian conspiracies, alien stuff. So you know, if that's your cup of tea, you'll probably enjoy it. But if not, <laughs> probably you probably won't. But there are really good sections from Matrix Five, so I just wanted to share some of them. And this was a question. I believe you tapped into the library on level 27. The Monroe Institute has their Beyond 27 week that takes participants into the mid 30s levels. This is where the higher selves are residing. Is there anything you can that you can or will contribute regarding to getting the most from Gateway? So in the Gateway program, uh, level 27 is referring to a uh, area of consciousness in the afterlife planes where humans are um, they're healing from their healing or integrating their previous incarnation on earth and from here they can decide uh, whether to go back to earth or to progress um, into the belief system territories so that means like if you're a christian you'll likely end up in a Christian afterlife. If you're a Muslim, you'll likely end up in a Muslim afterlife, uh, even Buddhism if you're faith-based. So Bob in Far Journeys found that uh, humans on earth are trapped essentially in this cycle between the belief systems, territories, and reincarnating on earth. And they just go through this samsaric cycle again and again. Uh they end up in an afterlife territory. It's pleasant for some time. And then one of someone decides to reincarnate and you go with them like a family member or whatever. Uh, you enjoy your afterlife destination for some time, but you feel like you're, you had some things on earth that you still wanted to experience. You still wanted to be a warrior or you still wanted to do this or that. So you go back and incarnate. So Bob discovers this particular cycle between the belief system territories and earth in far journeys. So uh, beyond 27 week is referring to a week at the Ramon Rowe Institute where people are exploring focus levels past the belief systems territories. Takes you into the mid thirties level. So these are where the non-human intelligences that are uh, observing earth in far journeys become accessible. And beyond that are the higher selves. So this was his answer. Gateway, of course, does not take you beyond Focus 21. Uh, Focus 21 is uh, an out-of-body experience, uh, basically. So, so to get to 27, you'd have to go to Lifeline, which has a great tour of 27's library, healing center, etc., for someone who has completed Gateway, the key to your higher self is in Focus 12. To access your higher self, go to 12 and then move within yourself to reach your higher self. If you go to Focus Mid-30s, you can view your higher self from outside or from without. But you must get within from level 12 to access the stored data and meet your dominant incarnations and find out where you stand with them. Go for it and thanks for the comments. So what is this referring to? This is referring to once you've had an out-of-body experience, you're able to access the higher self by... It's like... I'm actually going to stop screen sharing so I can show you this particular movement because I've had OBEs in this direction. So usually when we have an OBE or we say higher self now, there's an ascension that happens like you start traveling upward through planes or you have a sense of going upward. What this author is saying and what Bob Monroe also um, talked about in Far Journeys was that to access the higher self uh, data center and to see your simultaneous incarnations, to just see what's under the hood of this whole guidance higher self thing, Bob had to OBE this way. Like consciousness actually turns in on itself. The astral body or the OBE turns in on itself. And when it does that, it appears in this inner reality. That's what he's talking about.
going to go back to this. To access the stored data and meet your dominant incarnations. Dominant incarnations is his word for your guides or the uh, alternate versions of yourself, guides that are helping you in this incarnation. So in many of these experiences, a particular guide has manifested themselves uh, to me and helped me. A lot of my initial OBEs were actually facilitated. So that means that I would enter the vibrational state and I would feel or experience that someone was reaching out, like that there was a hand in front of me. And when I would hold that hand or grab that hand, I'd be pulled through the ceiling and, you know, through a portal and into um, those OBE territories that are beyond past the belief system territories. So your unfolding is being facilitated and uh, getting in touch with guidance is really uh, for connecting with that. And this was the original uh, photo from, from Matrix 5. So these jellyfish-looking nebula things are the uh, formless aspect, uh, formless nature of the higher self. But when you travel to these in your OBEs or you travel up your silver cord or, you know, you invert your OBE, you appear in this, in this nebula. And what I've found is that uh, appearing inside it, there's this whole inner structure. So all of these, you know, these people down here at the bottom of the picture, these are your past parallel and future selves. So when you appear in the actual mainframe or in the higher self, for me, the incarnations appeared on screens. So when I placed my attention on one of the screens, I would shoop, appear in one of these uh, other incarnates. So, so I'm one of, uh, from what I saw, there were at least like, you know, 40 screens or so, but that's just what I saw in that particular area. Uh, it's likely that there are many more. Bob Monroe said that when he made it into his particular higher self structure, that he saw a bed of flowers and that there were thousands of flowers. He didn't count all of them, but he estimated, you know, a couple thousand. Question, would my higher self appear somewhat faceless why would my higher self appear somewhat faceless in the dream time, as I believe I have seen on a few occasions? Sometimes I would switch bodies with it as well. Thank you for your work. Answer. What many people call their guard, their guide or guardian is actually their higher self in almost all cases. You will have to access your own individual higher self to get the answer to your question. So in summary, uh, the reason that I emphasize OBEs and lucid dreaming for this particular work is that it'll give you a direct encounter with this particular field of information that I'm calling higher self. But it doesn't have to be that way for you, you know, um, Edgar Casey, for example, he wrote a book called Channeling Your Higher Self. That's a very that's very much just direct contact with the higher self and receiving information through mental pictures and feelings. Uh, learning channeling as an ability for you to deepen connection with the higher self. And Casey has all of his you know methodologies in that book. So this isn't the only way to experience this particular field of information and consciousness it's just what i experienced so it's it's that's what i can teach i can't i can't teach you edgar casey channeling because i i don't know how to do that but i but i can teach this because i've actually experienced this particular field through out of body um i'll mention on a final note 
that during my last meditation retreat, and this this could answer some questions for some of you that may be having difficulties with entering a lucid dream or having an OBE. On the meditation retreat, my mind, like back in June, my mind got so still that the black screen of my consciousness just turned into the next reality. And that reality was the mainframe, like the screens appeared, everything. So, and phasing in between these different incarnations. That took about just four or five days of meditating a lot. So my mind had gotten still enough for that to occur. And uh, I think we've we've mentioned in the chat Daniel Ingram and the fire casino. So Daniel Ingram does these fire casino retreats where he'll stare at a flame for like four weeks. And he finds that on the fourth week, a visual, an activation in the visual field occurs. And he's able to enter lucid dreams seamlessly. Like he doesn't have to fall asleep and go through this exit that, that I have to go through. He's charged up from all the meditation. So that occurred with me as well. Um, when I did a 10 day retreat back in June, like five days, my system had a lot of energy and lucidity from the meditation. And then it found that it was just able to seamlessly phase into these other states and make these discoveries or these um, insights and knowledges uh, very, just very directly. So with channeling, channeling's verified by the kind of experiences that you occur in the channeling state and also if you're channeling information for other people you you get information that you otherwise wouldn't have had access to but um it's its own system there's many systems like people explore tarot for higher self realization people explore magic knowledge and conversation of the holy guardian angel they follow you know they explore alistair crowley's teachings that's another stream that leads to this higher self. Robert Monroe, uh, Hank Wesselman, and shamanism. These are all different forms of higher self yoga. And they are indeed higher self yoga. It's not Zen Buddhism doing nothing, realizing emptiness. Like, no, this is a different dance. This is a very specific thing. Uh, realizing guidance and having that become more prominent in your life is not Vipassana meditation. It's just not. And I've done enough Buddhist meditation, so I can tell you uh, that that's exactly the case. <laughs> you might have inadvertent experiences through Vipassana or through Buddhist meditation or through self-inquiry that, you know, have the higher self bleed through or you start having OBEs and you start discovering this for yourself, traveling on the inner planes, etc. But those systems in of themselves do not focus on that. So that's why if guidance is a particular thing in your life, if you've had this voice that speaks to you or that guides you, um, your Zen training may not necessarily address that. So that's something that I just wanted to make very clear. Also, if you haven't noticed yet, when you go to Zen teachers and you talk to them about this, or when you go to Buddhist teachers, Vipassana teachers, and you talk to them about this, they just say, it's your conscious mind focus on the practice <laughs> they have there's like no you know if it's off their radar then it doesn't exist for you know that's the case in many spiritual teachings and for many spiritual teachers if it's not on their map it's not important so yeah final thing i recommend is um learn more about this particular higher self subject uh, there's a lot of it in theosophy called the Solar Angel, Aleister Crowley, uh, Knowledge and Conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, True Self, and uh, various resources that I provided, Robert Monroe as well. So I'll stop the recording now. Thank you for listening to that.